Good morning, dear brothers and sisters. Good morning. Welcome to this confirmation ride. Together, please rise and welcome our celebrant, the Most Reverend Bishop Neil Tiedemann and Father Daryl Da Costa, our pastor and ministers also. Together, let's sing our opening hymn, if you know it, Sweet, Sweet Spirit. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on its face, and I know to feel the presence of the Lord. everybody. Bienvenidos a todos. Uh, esta mañana es algo bien especial. Vamos a compartir el don del Espíritu Santo. One of the most beautiful things that I do as a bishop is to share the gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and that's what we do today. Uh, so it's a very special day for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace Amen. be with you. And let us pray. Grant, loving and merciful Father, that the Holy Spirit coming near, dwelling graciously within us, may make of us a perfect temple of his glory. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners 
to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God, to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, you yourselves shall be named priests of the Lord, ministers of our God, you shall be called. I will give them their recompense faithfully, a lasting covenant I will make with them. Their descendants shall be renowned among the nations and their offsprings among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them as a race the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. In contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, 
joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Now, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also follow the Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Luke, glory to you, Lord. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he grew up, and went according with the custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up and read, and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Jesus unrolled the scroll and found the passage where he was writing. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the liberty to captives and recovery of sight of the blind and let the oppressor go free and to proclaim a year accepted to the Lord. Rolling back the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant, sat down, and all the eyes of the synagogue looked into to him. He said to them, Today the scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him, and were amazed of the gracious word that came from his mouth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Bishop Tiederman, as pastor of Our Lady of Fatima Parish, I testify that these young people have participated in our parish preparation program for the sacrament of confirmation and are supported by their families and our parish community. It is my privilege to present them to you to receive the sacrament of confirmation. And so now I ask all the confirmands, those who are receiving confirmation, to please at this time stand. In the name of Jesus Christ and his church, 
I accept you as candidates for the sacrament of confirmation. May the Lord who has begun this good work in you bring it to fulfillment. As I sit listening to the word of God and seems wherever I go, this mask is such a pain in the neck. It is so hard to breathe. And if you do anything like climb steps or you go for a walk outside, all of a sudden you're struggling to breathe. It's so difficult. I'd like to use that as a way to understand the sacrament of confirmation. At this very moment, everyone in the church is breathing. And if it weren't for the mask, you wouldn't even be thinking about it. We breathe all day long. And as we sleep, we're breathing, air is coming in and going out. And, and the, the difficulty with the pandemic is that it can attack our respiratory system. And, and then all of a sudden we're on ventilators and, and we can't breathe. You and I cannot live without breathing. Now, the word spirit comes from a Latin word that means breath or gentle breeze. So when we talk about the Holy Spirit, we're talking about the breath of God. And without the breath of God, you and I cannot live. The breath of God enlivens us and inspires us. It moves our heart. Each week as we gather around the table of the Lord to be fed with the body and blood of Jesus, we proclaim all that makes our lives worthwhile. We say, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life. I bet my life on that. It means that wherever there is life, be it in the flowers or the vegetables that grow, the songs of the bird in the morning, the Holy Spirit is acting. And when we form friendships, all of a sudden somebody becomes special in our life. It's the gift of the Holy Spirit that helps us to be friends. We all fall in love. When we fall in love and form a family and we're married, we give life to children, it's the Holy Spirit, the breath of God that is acting in and through us. And then, you know, we make mistakes. Uh, we do things we shouldn't or we don't do things we should it's the Holy Spirit that moves me to say, I'm sorry. And even more beautifully is when somebody comes to me and says, I'm sorry, it's in and through the Holy Spirit that I can say, I forgive you. I still love you. The Holy Spirit the Lord and giver of life. If we just go to God's word, we open up the sacred scriptures and we come to the very first page in Genesis, it says that the spirit hovered over the water. El espíritu alteaba sobre las aguas. And as the spirit was hovering over the waters, Yahweh God speaks and creation 
comes into existence. And then as we continue to read the book of Genesis, uh, we see that Yahweh God is in the garden. And he bends down and he takes up the clay of the earth. Il baro, isopla. He breathes into the clay and we come into existence and have life. And then as we continue to read, uh, we see that the Holy Spirit has been acting all during this time, and we have uh, a prophet Isaiah speaking about the Spirit of the Lord is telling me to, to, to bind up the wounds of those who suffer. Some 500 years before Jesus, the Spirit is moving this man. The Spirit of God is upon me. And then as we continue, we come to the Gospel of Luke. Uh, Luke, a young woman your age, in a small remote village of Nazareth, receives the messenger of God. Gabriel tells her that she is to conceive a child, and this child is going to be the Savior, God's Son. And she's told the Holy Spirit will come upon her and the child will be conceived. And as we continue to read, we hear that that child grows and becomes a man. And when he's probably around 30 years old, he comes to the River Jordan. And there are a multitude of people coming for repentance. And they asked John the Baptist uh, for a baptism of conversion and forgiveness. And at that very moment, Jesus comes and embraces all of humanity. He embraces you and I and anybody who's ever lived and embraces us while we're sinners and frail. And he plunges himself into the Jordan River. And when he comes up, the gospel says that the sky is ripped in two and that the Spirit descends upon him. And so it means that whatever Jesus does in his life, it's in and through the Holy Spirit. So we see when he goes to his hometown and he comes to the synagogue, he stands up and he reads that first prophecy of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he says, today, this is fulfilled in your hearing. In and through the Holy Spirit, Jesus acts. And then when he comes to a man, Bartimaeus, who is blind, it's in and through the Holy Spirit that he touches Bartimaeus. Uh, we're told that Bartimaeus is able to see and he follows Jesus to Jerusalem. Or when the lepers come uh, and they come to him and they, they're ringing the, their bell because nobody's allowed to be close to him, he cleanses them of their infirmity and makes them healthy again. It's in and through the Holy Spirit. And then in John's Gospel, we hear that Jesus' beloved friend, Lazarus, has died. And Jesus comes to the tomb. Lazarus, come out. And he comes back to life. In and through the Holy Spirit. And in John's Gospel tells us that as Jesus is on the cross, his mother and his beloved disciple are there at the foot of the cross. The very last thing he does is hand over his spirit. And then on that night of the first day of the week, when the disciples are gathered together with the doors locked, Jesus rises up in their midst. Peace be with you. 
and he breathes on them, receive the Holy Spirit. And as we continue to read the gospel, we see that in the, the, the Acts of the Apostles, 50 days after the resurrection, once again the disciples are gathered together with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and they hear a loud noise. And as the wind blows, the spirit in tongues of fire comes into their hearts and inflames them with the love of God. And they go out and they preach the good news of God's love. They do it to all places for all times. And it's because of that gift of the Holy Spirit that inflames the heart of Christ's loved ones. You and I are here today to receive that fire of love that animates us and makes us different. So this is what we're about to do today. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're, we're going to proclaim what's, what's the most important in our lives. We're going to reject sin because we love God, who is Father, who is Jesus Christ, and who is the Holy Spirit who comes to us through the church. So the very first thing is I'm going to ask you questions. Do you reject sin? Do you reject Satan and all his empty promises? And you're going to say, I do. And then we come to the important one. Do you believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth? And you're going to say, I do. Then after we do that, uh, I'm going to invite everybody to stand and they're going to pray. We're going to pray for you. Uh, and then after a moment of silence, I, I say a prayer and as if I'm pouring the Holy Spirit down upon you, I pray that God, the Father of Jesus Christ, sends upon you the Holy Spirit and fills you with uh, his gifts of knowledge and wisdom and understanding, strength and fear of the Lord. And then you'll come up to me and I'll anoint you with this oil. We call it chrism, which really means Christ. It's the oil that has the name of Jesus on it, Christ and it's been mixed with perfume. So you'll have the fragrance of Christ. Huele la fragancia de Cristo cuando son ungidos. I'll say, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you'll say, Amen. And then just as Jesus did on the night of the resurrection, I'll say, peace be with you and you'll say and with your spirit so are you ready we're about to do it now there's just one thing I'm going to ask that's really important I want you to proclaim your love of God and rejection of sin so loud that God our loving father can hear you and he can do nothing but send the Holy Spirit upon you so when I say, do you reject sin? You're going to say, not good enough. It's got to be louder. God's got to hear you. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Now that's good. And the big one now, this is the big one. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life? Boy, you guys are great. I really like that. So I'm going to ask you to kindly stand, okay? Just those to be confirmed. Do you reject sin? Do you renounce Satan and all his empty works and promises? You do? Do you reject sin? Do you believe in God the Father, 
creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Now this is the big one. So make sure you say it loud. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today through the sacrament of confirmation is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on Pentecost Sunday? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus. And so now I ask all to kindly stand. Y oremos, mis queridos hermanos, a Dios Padre Todopoderoso, por estos hijos suyos, que renacieron ya a la vida eterna en el bautismo, para que envíe abundantemente sobre ellos al Espíritu Santo, that he will confirm them with his abundant gifts, and through his holy anointing, conform them more fully to Christ our Lord. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit, the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I'm about to anoint you now. Remember, I'll say, receive, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and you'll say so I can hear it, Amen. And then I'll say, peace be with you. And so I can hear it, you'll say, and with your spirit. Okay? It's a deal.
Give us hearts that see 
set our loving free. Hear us and help us, O Lord. Saint Elizabeth of Hungary, teach us the gift of the Holy Oh, breathe. 
por favor mis queridos hermanos e hermanas presentemos a Dios nuestro Padre nuestras peticiones y oraciones por estos jóvenes que han recibido al Espíritu Santo we all respond Lord hear our prayers Lord hear our prayers en español decimos Dios de amor escúchanos For those his servants who the gift of the Holy Spirit has confirmed that planted in faith and growing in love that may bear witness of Christ the Lord by their way of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Por los padres y los eh, padrinos que hoy han estado aquí dando el ejemplo para seguir el, el enseñando a los eh, que han sido confirmados en este día el camino hacia el Señor roguemos al Señor for the Holy Church of God together with Francis our Pope Nicholas our Bishop all the bishops Bishop of Tiedemann who be here confirm you get it by the Holy Spirit the church may grow and increase in united and faith and love until the coming of the Lord Let's pray to the Lord. Por todo el mundo, para que toda la gente encuentre la paz y el amor en el Padre y conozcan también a los hermanos y hermanas, todos una misma raza, una misma nación y un, y un mismo corazón en el quinto, en el reino de Dios, roguemos al Señor. Oh God who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles and will that through them and their successors the same Spirit be handed on to the rest of the faithful. Listen favorably to our prayers. Grant that your divine grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Let's we'll do a collection.
Let us gather together our petitions, praying with one voice as our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And now a few words of thank you for this beautiful occasion that we have had today. We are blessed um, to have in our parish with uh, these young men and women who have been just recent and sent just confirmed to our parish. Why don't we give them all a, a round of applause? I pray that you can continue to grow in, the, in your life, spiritual life, in life with Christ, and let us see you in the parish, okay? We need your help. Let's share the Spirit and your gifts with our parish and the parish life, and of course, where all where you go in the world. And in this celebration, it was made possible, of course, through the, the work and dedication of, of the servants, people who are helping out in our parish, and, and among them is our ministers, the ministers uh, of, uh, of the lector, our lector, um, our music, um, those who are working with the hospitality, those in, uh, in the sacristy, those who, will, uh, who are in the rectory, all behind the scenes, we thank them for uh, all that they do in making this beautiful um, celebration possible. But particularly, uh, we thank uh, those who worked closely with our newly confirmed. Um, these I would like to thank, especially our Director of Religious uh, Faith Formation, uh, Josephine Herman. We thank you for all the work. We thank uh, Ver uh, Veronica, who's in the office, secretary of the office, all the uh, paperwork and all of that. We thank you for all that that you do in our office of faith formation. Veronica, where are you? Are? We thank all your teachers, those in the School of Religion and those in our elementary school of Our Lady of Fatima. Thank you for helping these, these, these young people. Learn the faith. Thank you. Uh, we thank also our principal uh, of Our Lady of Fatima, and we thank all uh, as well. And if we thank also those who are with us, uh, um, our clergy here. We we thank uh, Deacon Marco, very help, very uh, helpful with all of the these uh, liturgical things that we're doing, all of the logistics. Deacon Marco, thank you. We thank, we thank our, my, uh, the, our associates here. Um, we have D uh, Father Ricardo and Father Gabriel, the uh, chaplain of Elmhurst Hospital, who wanted to make the time to spend here for confirmation and praying for you. We thank you for your presence here today. We thank uh, Deacon Kevin Hughes, who is a master of ceremony here. Thank you for serving here and helping out our bishop and helping us in this celebration. Thank you, Ke Deacon Kevin. And last but not least, the, uh, we, we thank Bishop Neil Tiedemann. Um, and one of the things I, I, I particularly, I know, have to explore with Bishop Tiedemann, he was one stationed in Jamaica, West Indies. This is my, uh, this is the homeland for my parents, and so he's he's been different places, and he was talking about uh, both dioceses, how he's his connection with both dioceses, and he's here with us, giving a beautiful homily for our confirmandis. So thank you, Bishop, uh, for being here with us today.
And now uh, we conclude, and of course, uh, not uh, really what we need to thank definitely is our parents. The parents here who supported and the family supporting all of the newly confirmed. Thank you so much for your faith, passing on your faith. And now we will conclude um, with Bishop Tiedemann and his blessing for us. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Que Dios Padre Todopoderoso, que los ha adoptado como hijos, haciéndolos renacer del agua del Espíritu Santo, los bendiga, los haga siempre dignos de su amor paternal. Amén. May His only begotten Son, who promised that the spirit of truth would abide in his church, bless you, confirm you by his power in the confession of the true faith. Amen. Amen. Que el Espíritu Santo, que encendió en el corazón de los discípulos el fuego de amor, los bendiga, congregándolos en la unidad, los conduzca a través de los pruebas de la vida, a los gozos del reino eterno. Amen. May Almighty God bless, protect, and watch over you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us go in peace. We sing together our recessional hymn, brothers and sisters, Christ be our light. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light for the world to see. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be Longing for hope, many despair. Your word alone has power to save us. Make us your living voice. Christ, be our light. Shine in our hearts. Shine through the darkness. Christ, be.